Welcome guys, God bless you. Now let's get into the topic, how to spot a demon in somebody. One evening I was witnessing the people at a shopping center and I was talking to this young man. This homeless guy comes up to us in the middle of the conversation and just gets in my personal space and stares at me for several seconds and then walks away. So later that night after witnessing the 10 to 15 more people, the homeless man's walking towards me and I'm walking towards him. I don't want to witness to him because he's sketchy. Okay, he's a sketchy guy, but I'm thinking, look, God will want me to do it. So I go up to him, hey, how you doing? He seems chill. He seems nice. We start talking a little bit, and then I ask him if he has a relationship with Jesus. Instantly, his eyes change and lock into my eyes and get wide. And as soon as that happened, I felt a feeling that I've never felt before when talking to somebody. My whole body was surrounded by this negative energy that made me feel so uneasy. And then I started talking to him a little bit more about Jesus and the gospel. And I go into my fanny pack to hand him a gospel track. And he takes his book bag off, puts his stuff down, and lunges at me. And I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little scared. I was a little intimidated and uneasy because I knew he was manifesting. I just, it was something I'd never experienced before because up until that point, I had only witnessed to a few dozen people. And this happened probably like four months ago. So it happened a while ago. I've witnessed to a lot more people since then. And even to this day, I have never felt a feeling like that when talking to somebody. And that's the first time. When they manifest, when something changes about them, your intuition picks it up and you can feel a negative energy, a negative vibe that really makes you uneasy because it's a, de a demonic presence that you probably never felt before. And I've never felt that before because who was I? I wasn't a threat to the satanic kingdom. I wasn't witnessing to people. I wasn't street preaching. I wasn't making videos. Like, who was I? The devil didn't have to attack me. And it was because I witnessed to 10 to 15 people that night that the devil was like, look, I'm going to make you stop. You've done enough. You planted too many seeds. So that is the first sign. And the second sign is their attitude instantly changes when talking about a specific subject. So they could get really angry. They could start like, that's a manifestation, man. They'll be really calm. And then it's like something triggers them to switch. You know, their attitude change. They get really mad. And that topic could be anything, man. Another guy, I had asked him if he if he read the Bible because he had a Jesus tattoo. And this is a guy I talk to pretty often when I'm in the gym. And he instantly got, look, just same deal. Got mad, threatening me, telling me he's going to bury me in his backyard. Tells me to leave. Next day, comes up to me. Hey, how's it going? Shakes my hand. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? It's so weird, bro. So people sensitive topics man people will manifest on you and that's another sign that somebody might have a demon in them next they have demonic traits like consistently now all of us were in the flesh so we may lie occasionally we may be deceitful stuff like that but some of the demonic traits that that people can that may have a demon in them may show is prideful deceitful a liar manipulative self-centered um causes confusion narcissist likes to stir things up, and drains your energy. All of this is a distraction. All of this is to get you emotional and pull you away from God. That's what the devil does, man. He's the author of confusion, father of lies, wants to steal, kill, and destroy. So, the next thing, they're very sinful and live in vanity, man. If we're out here living in sin opening up all these doorways, and now look, no man's without sin, but I'm talking woeful sin, fornication, getting drunk, getting high, being addicted to something, uh, idolizing, saying God's name in vain, breaking the Ten Commandments. If we're doing this all the time, we're leaving a door open for demons to come in, demonic spirits to come in. So if somebody's living like this, if they're all in vanity, they've probably got some, some demons in them. Now, lower level, I, I don't know, but they probably do. Next thing, health issues. Look, I'm not a medical professional. If they have health issues, if you have health issues, consult a medical professional to see what the health issue is. But through demonic possession in the past and people with demonic spirits, generational curses, those calls can cause health issues as well. Um, 
bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, etc. Now, not every case does that mean, oh, here's a demon. Sometimes it, it could be a legitimate health issue because we're in a fallen nature. Our body is not perfect. Our body is flawed in this physical realm. Okay, we have sickness, we have death, but that can be influenced by the demonic kingdom and satanic kingdom as well. I would not put that off. Some people go to the doctor, do this and do that, and they still can't find out the problem. They still can't fix the health issue. And look at how many people have health issues today. Look at how many people are on medication today. That didn't used to be a thing. Why is that? Look at how sin is just running rampant in society. So, next, if you know them well, like let's say it's my mom, my brother, my best friend, my cousin, somebody I see a lot, somebody I know a lot, somebody I hang out with, and they start just acting different out of nowhere. It's like, man, you used to be like cheerful, happy, and now you're just you're different. You can pick up the vibe, and it's like sudden. It's not 10 years pass by, and they're, they're sick or in pain. No, it's like... Bro, what happened to you? It's crazy. And the last thing we have is they hate you for no reason. They're acting like just mean to you for no reason. They're toxic. That could be a demon. <laughs> you know, you don't even know a person and yet they're chewing you out. Yet they're coming for your neck and you don't know why. What did I do to you? So, yeah, man, it's real. It definitely is real. Now, now don't focus so much on all this. Oh, he might have a demon. She might have a demon. No, be mindful of it. But focus on just God, building your relationship with God, seeking the kingdom of God, helping people, witnessing the people. This is just a, a small thing to think about occasionally. Something to reference to. If you have a, a weird situation in witnessing or life, then you can reference this. Okay, something must be going on. Eh, they probably have a demon. Okay, cool. Well, not cool, but they have a demon. Okay, maybe I can help them. Maybe I can witness to them more. Maybe I can try to do Bible study with them. I don't know. But we get too caught up on this demonic, satanic kingdom stuff. We get too caught up on that. And we tend to overlook the power of God. We overlook the glory of God and worshiping and praising God. When we focus on this, this battle. Now, it's a battle. Every single day, focus on it, pray about it, but don't dwell on that. Because our God has already overcome the devil, the flesh, the world, like he has. Now we got to plant seeds in people, we got to witness the people, we got to gotta plant seeds in people and lead them to God. Now it's up to them to consistently stay with that. Hey man, hey, come, yo. It's been a while. Come to church with me, and then we'll get some lunch after. I mean, we could be doing so much more, but, but we're not. We're not. We're not witnessing the people just staying in my own lane. Okay, cool. I'm going to heaven. But what about all the people that I see on a day-to-day -day basis? In the post office, in the gym, in the grocery store, in the bank, whatever. In let's say you go to school, in class, you talk to... Some people in class, your dorm mate, whatever. Witness to them. Especially people that you know and see consistently because you can ask them out of the blue, what do you think the meaning of life is? And then you all can just talk. 